information that I want to share with you guys tonight. So Megan last week talked about Instagram and just to add to what Megan was saying, if you guys are in the Beachbody Champions page, there have been um, two, I think two other trainings on Instagram. One was Jen Richardson and I've, I've only gotten through half of it. And then Megan was telling me today that there was another one that was done by another coach in there and she shared it on our team page. So Beachbody Champions page, they often have leaders in the organization um, just sharing trainings. I know I did one about sharing your story months ago, um, but they are really, really good. So if you are looking for personal development or if you're looking for actual strategy, I would look at that Beachbody Champions page. I'm gonna go ahead and mute. Oops. Done. Hold on. All right, guys. So tonight I am going to be talking about something that really shifted my business last year when I started doing it. And quite a few of my coaches in the organization have done it as well. And I went back and forth about how I wanted to do this. If I wanted to focus on building a like page or if I wanted to talk more about just building value through the value funnel and how I actually create a system for how I bring people in, but not just bring them in. I actually make them consumers of the product. And I'm actually, the way that I look at it now is that the more we load the value up front, um, the less objection we get uh, when we actually, when it comes time for somebody to purchase something. And there's a whole system that I use to be ordered in order for me to do this. Now, a couple of things. I'm going to talk about my like page, but what I'm talking about can be done on your personal page. Um, it can very likely be done on your Instagram. I'm by no means somebody who's, you know, uh, trained very well in Instagram, but it can be done in your Instagram as well. And basically what the premise of this is, is just making sure that you are the real deal. So let's have, can we have like an honest talk for like two seconds? And this is just me being just really candid and really real with you guys. There are 400,000 coaches in the organization and a lot of those coaches are not in it for the right reason or they just aren't doing a good job of really making it look like they aren't trying to sell a product. And we can avoid a lot of objection if we separate ourselves from that pack. If we stop making it feel icky and we start making it feel really authentic. You know, I was in another group not too long ago and somebody talked about how there is something that happened in the last few years and I'm sure that you guys have seen it too where people started building their brands on social media like five years ago when I was on Facebook and you guys probably remember this you maybe had a hundred friends or 200 friends and you knew everybody on your Facebook page and you knew everybody's kids and everybody popped up in your news feed and everybody was just sharing their life and then it started feeling like people started sharing their fitness or people started sharing their skincare or people started sharing their jewelry or people started, but they didn't just go out at what they were sharing. It became buy this from me or buy that from me. And all of a sudden there's these Hey girl messages coming out. And I don't know, I get a Hey girl message right now. And I'm kind of like, oh, I'm not your girl. I don't know you. And it started to feel kind of weird. And so this whole time we've been training coaches on this Hey girl thing when really I've been backing away from that a little bit and I've been really focusing on adding value in a different way. Now, don't get me wrong. I send my hey girls out once I actually know somebody, once I actually have talked to them, but I'm not very good at cold invites. It's just not my thing and it has never felt good to me. It's never felt right to me. And I, I don't know if it's something in that transition of everybody started selling something or what it was, but we have something amazing to offer and it does change lives. And I'm proud. I'm so proud to be a coach and of, of what I can give to people and what I can offer to people. But I really want to make them know that I'm not one of those icky coaches, that if you invest in me, I'm going to make sure that I'm part of that investment too. I'm not just going to sell you a bag of powder and expect you to know what to do with it. I'm going to work with you on how you can be forever changed because of it. 
okay? So I want you to know the background with how I started to think about this. And I never really termed it value funnel until somebody had mentioned that I was kind of like becoming known as that person who does that funneling thing. And I never thought of it like that. But today, as I sat down and I was getting ready for this presentation, I thought it's exactly what it is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to screen share with you guys. And this is the first time I've really put it in writing. So if there is anything that seems off or amiss, or if you want to just ask questions about, please make sure you do. So tonight, no matter if you're working on your like page, no matter if you're working on your personal page, no matter if you're working on your Instagram, you can use this. Now, if you're looking specifically for how I built my like page, I've got YouTube clips for that, our videos for that. If you're talking, if I'm going to go into detail about my free groups, and I know for my, my coaches, that's probably like me talking with a broken record as a broken record, but if you have not heard me talk about free groups, I also have um, YouTube clips on that, and I'd be more than happy to share them with your coach so that they can share them with you as well. So, um, all right, so let me just scroll here. Can you guys see my screen okay? Let's see. Can you guys see it okay? All right, so as I was sitting down today, I thought about, okay, so why, why do I create the funnel? And I kind of touched on this a little bit. So we have to know that we have something to offer. And for some reason, because maybe we feel like we've been sold to before, we have this feeling of, I don't want people to think that I'm out here to try to make money off of them. But we have to be a little cognizant of those words and say to ourselves, well, yes, I am. I am here to make an income and I have to be okay with making an income. And if people know that up front, when I really start to add value, they're going to object less because they know that I've already made some type of impact or am capable of making some type of impact. So the first thing we got to get on the table is you've got to be okay with saying, I want to make money in this business. Now, the reason that goes beyond, you know, why you want to make money and what you're going to do with that money and how that money is going to bless other people or whatever you use your money for is totally part of your why. It's totally part of why you coach, why you don't give up, why you're still going after this, even when it gets hard, when you've gotten the objections, but you have to say, I am okay with making an income at this business. Because once you get clear on that, it's almost like that fear factor of feeling salesy is going to be gone because you're doing this. So let's talk about the funnel. I do this because I know what it's like to feel like people just want to talk to me because they want to sell me something. I've gotten those messages before. And, and there are times now at this point in my business that I will respond back to them and say, you know, I really don't really know what this is. I don't really understand it. And honestly, I'm not really interested. And next time you have something where you can offer like some type of training or something like that I'd be more than interested and I tell people that like I let people know I'm not someone that wants to be sold to so I try to be pretty careful about making sure that I'm not coming off that way to others and my funnel allows me to do that number two it creates a standout factor when there's so many coaches in the organization just like I said when you are not being that person that's just buy off of me here's a sale this is what's happening here's a link click here you are creating that standout factor you aren't an icky beach body coach you are that coach that offers value um, it is authentic in relationship building you're actually talking to people now don't get me wrong you still are inviting you still have to talk to people you can't expect people to just come to you you have to create opportunity for people to learn more about you and that's what the funnel is all about um, it creates a desire and calls out the need for what you have to offer. And so when I think about that part of it, like there, when you create the funnel, it gives you more opportunity to explain yourself, right? So, you know, like when you have your kids, like if you, if you have little ones or even, you know, you, you guys are teachers and your kids do something ridiculous and they try to like backpedal and work their way out of it and they try to talk really fast and you're like, mm -mm, no, nope, not hearing it right now. That's sometimes what people do when they just even see the word beach body coach. They put their hand up and say, oh, hell no, I'm not interested in what you're doing right now. They don't even want to hear it. But when you have a value funnel, they're going to be like, okay, wait, what? Okay, so tell me a little bit more about this. What's the Shanti thing? What's this? What, what do you mean? Shake, what is this matcha tea that you're talking about? They, it gives you a little bit more of um, 
an opportunity to really talk about what you have to offer. Um, it's an objection stomper. When you start actually funneling people in, and we're going to talk about what we're funneling them into, you have the ability to actually take the objections that they're feeling or they felt or that you think they're feeling because you felt them and stop them. And they're going to not just see them. They're going to be like, she's speaking right to me because you've been so true and authentic to that point. It's going to stop it. And the best part about the funnel and what I appreciate about the funnel is that it takes the ick right out of it. It is not icky. It is something where you feel good because you are building relationships. So it, it, at the end of the day, if they don't invest in you, they have have seen everything that you have to offer and you have left that door open and you know that even if they don't they're gonna go right back into the next funnel or the next funnel or the next funnel so there's plenty of opportunity for you to actually continue to build relationships I do have one coach in my organization actually at this point I think I have more than that but I have one coach who said I was she was with me free group after free group after free group and then she said I want to do what you do and it wasn't about the Shakeology, the challenge group. She never experienced any of it, but she did experience that culture of those free groups that I ran month after month. So she jumped right into it. Okay. All right. So next page, we're going to just jump right into the conversation and we're going to talk about what it looks like. Okay. So just like any funnel, our job is to take a wide variety of people and slim it down. My, what I've experienced is that when I get people to a certain point where they're engaged with me, um, I get it to about a one in 10, meaning that about a one in 10 people actually purchase with me while they go through this process. It can be anywhere from three to 10 or one, one to 10, but please know it's never 10 out of 10 people. There is never going to be everybody purchasing who goes through this process. It just doesn't work like that. But when I know that I have more people in my poll, I know that I will have more people purchasing a challenge pack and even just mathematically thinking in the easiest level and why I challenge people to set goals for how many people you can bring into your free groups, how many referrals you can get. It is because I know that at the end of the day, the more people you are conversing with and that you reach, the more likely you are when you build them through that funnel to actually have those people purchase so it really is just looking at the mass number and saying I'm gonna inspire and engage and interact and and really focus on each level until I get down to that last step where they have, have to actually make an action they have to apply an action and I know it's gonna be either a 1 out of 10 or a 3 out of 10 so in your head right now you're saying okay if I can get 100 new people into a group a month, what would my success club numbers look like? If I could get 10 more people, 20 more people, 30 more people into a group, into my funnel, what would that mean for my income? What would that mean for my engagement on my personal page? What would that mean for you know my business? How would that look if you doubled your success club numbers? How would what, what would that mean to you in terms of your finances? What would that mean to you in terms of how you are running your groups? What your team sees you doing? The more you step up in your actions, the more your team is going to say, I can do that too. I just have to simplify it and I think we just tend to overthink it all we just tend to say like but I could be doing this and I could be doing that and I could be doing this like Instagram Facebook page this that this and don't you know the funnel applies to anything all it is is taking a, a large amount of people and getting to them to the point to trust you enough that they are going to do something with what you are offering. So I don't know if you want to screenshot that. I'm going to walk you through each of these stages and what it's meant to me. It might be different for you. How you engage in any one of these stages could totally look different for you based on your social media, based on your personality, based on you know how you like to conduct your email list or whatever it might be. So let's break it down to where we start. And that is attraction, okay? So attraction, you guys have heard of us talk about attraction marketing. You can go to YouTube and just type in attraction marketing beach body coaches and you will find training after training where they say the same thing. You want to talk to the person that you want to work with. You are not going to attract everybody. People are not going to like what you are throwing down, but somebody is. 
and somebody needs your story and somebody needs what you are going to say and somebody is going to connect and relate to you. So the first step of the funnel is almost as if you look at it as your entire population of people that see your posts. So that is, that's like everybody. So for me, it might be everybody on my one fit fighter or on my personal or on my Instagram, whatever it is, it's everybody. But with attraction, you're taking that poll of everybody and saying, there's going to be a smaller amount of people that are actually attracted to me. And it is kind of like dating. You know, if you look at someone's social media or even celebrities or something, you're like, no, I can't get down with what she's throwing right now. I'm not, I'm not vibing with that. Um, but then you might look at somebody else and say, I kind of, I'm not sure if I like this, but I might. And then they put a post up and you're like, yep, I like it. So I'll give you an example. Um, and I was, did anyone get the rocket ship on their Facebook um, phone, on, on their phone, on their app? There's a rocket ship now on the bottom. And what it is, is it takes the population of the things that you would probably mo like, most likely like, and it actually like generates all of these different Facebook pages that you would possibly be interested in. And so this one day, um, and this was just earlier this week, this girl popped up. Her name was Jordan Lee, and she writes Soul Scripts. I don't know if you guys have heard of her. She's young 20s. One of her posts was about being a newlywed, and I was like, yeah, it's not really me. I, I don't really like this. But then she started talking a lot about um, just, just, being uncomfortable in her own skin. And she talked about how she threw away her bikinis because she didn't want to fight that battle anymore. And today she talked about like people pleasing. And I was like, she's my jam. I like her. I will follow her. So at first I was like, yeah, I'm not really sure. I like what she's throwing down. I'm not really in that newlywed kind of stage. But then she started saying other things where I was like, I do like that. So when people are getting to know you, they're going to see whether they, they vibe with it or not. So that consistency comes into play with whatever message it is that you're trying to throw down. So if it's, if it's spiritual, if it's running, if it's, um, you know, being confident in your own skin, if you have a sense of humor, if you quote movies, uh, you know, if you like sparkly glittery things, if you, um, you know, love like legally blonde. I think of Jen Guthrie when I think of that all the time, but whatever it is, people are, they are judging you, you know, they, because they want to see what you mean in their own life. Like you bring out something in them. And whatever it is that you're doing and you're putting out there as yourself, being yourself, doing your own thing, you are making them think, well, what does that mean to me? They're internalizing it. And there's nothing you can do that's out of your control how they internalize it. But you just need to know that it's okay when not everyone's liking what you're throwing down. It's okay if not everybody likes what you are, what you stand for, and what you like. And you're okay with that. From there, so you offer value up front. You just focus on giving, things that you've learned, lessons that you've applied, recipe, from anything from recipes to just life experiences to um, scripture reading, whatever it is that you find valuable that you would think to yourself, what, what's the point of posting this? Like, so what? Why am I posting this? Every post has to start to become something where there's a purpose behind it. Whether it's you want to make people laugh, you want to make people feel an emotion, you want to make um, people see who you are, you want to you want to in some way elicit something from them. There's a purpose behind the post. If you're taking a post and you're you're trying to duplicate somebody else, it's not going to work. And so the attraction step and the reason I'm spending so much time on this is because this is where I think a lot of beach body coaches maybe lose their way is because you see how other people are doing it. And I even caution you when you're watching all these trainings and you're looking at other coaches to, to know when you have to stop looking at them and, and focusing on, okay, that's great. She did that. I don't want to duplicate her, but I can duplicate this process. I see the process she is using right now and I want to go with that. Um, I know that when I started posting on social media, people told me to do it three to five times a day. I'll be honest with you. I think that's starting to be like insane to me. Uh, I, I don't know if I just, I don't want to be attached to my phone all the time. I'm not sure what it is, but if you can add two to three quality posts a day, the quality keyword quality, that's fine. 
And if you use a like page, you can schedule your posts. I always schedule a humorous post in the afternoon that my audience I know is going to engage with. But two to three times a day for a meaningful post is plenty. Um, it's plenty for people to get a feel for what you are and what you stand for. And remember, too, uh, it used to be that Facebook would, would show in the news feed based on what time you post. They don't do that. They, they, they show it based on the quality of the, the post that you're putting out there. So, of course, going live is important. Um, you know, I'm a writer. I really enjoy writing more than just going live and, and not even knowing if what I'm going to talk about. So um, I tend to, to focus more on my posts. Uh, speaking to your audience, kind of getting a feel for who your audience is. Go back in your posts and say, well, what did well? You know, take an inventory of your post at the end of the week and say, well, what post did well? I need to post something more similar to this. And again, like I said, um, be okay with not being someone's jam because they will come back to your, to your page. Uh, you know, sometimes you will see the same names pop up and it's because you are doing something where you're inspiring them. You are doing something where you are calling people back to your page. Don't worry if they're a coach or they're not a coach. Just be out there to be who you are and be out there just to, to, to focus on getting down with the people that, that get what you're throwing down. And some of them will, some of them won't. So what, who's next, okay? So that was step one. You have your large poll, but you start to bring it into the people who are gonna jam with what you have to offer. And all it is, the first stage is just being you. It's just being authentic to who you are. It's just being authentic to what matters to you, why fitness matters to you, why beach body matters to you, why all of that even matters to you. Um, let me see if I have a chat. See if I can open that up. Uh, uh, I asked in my team page and did not respond. Okay, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if I missed something, Jen. I'm sorry. All right. Okay, next stage. Attraction and interaction go kind of hand in hand because this is about like your public post. This is when you're actually speaking to your audience. This is when you're actually asking questions, but this is when you're actually making them um, think. So this is, you know, posts that say, you know, have you ever felt or does anyone know what it's like? Or when I did a post where I said to my fellow people pleasers and got a huge amount of feedback from that. Um, you know, do you want cooking recipes or, or, or cocktail recipes where you're actually engaging? But the trick is, and Gary Vee just talked about this this week, I, I think, was you have to actually engage back. You know, it's very easy to click like, click like, click, click like, but take it one step further. Engage in the conversation. Private message those people who commented back. Um, actually start a conversation with them, asking them questions and engaging with them. Again, being authentic and not all fitness. And this is where interaction, where all of those jabs were when you were talking in the first stage, where you actually now can come in and you can say your right hook. You can say, this is what I am calling you to do. This is what I am asking you to do. So they search for you. You are walking the walk. You are making that choice, like um, what you want to offer to people. So for example, um, where can people come to search you? You know, where can they interact with you? People want to get, get more of you and who you stand for. So do you have a website that you link people back to? Um, if you have a website, what are you focusing on on your website? It has to be more than just each body. It has to be more than just the workouts. It has to be, you know, maybe recipes or, you know, maybe, um, you know, your, your diet secrets as a, as a runner. Or maybe it has to be... Um, I don't know. Um, I do stuff with personal development on my site or, you know, just, just, just personal blogs, or maybe you drive them to your print Pinterest. Do you have boards where you help people with fashion or do you help people with home decor or something? You want to start having other places where you're driving people. You know, maybe you do a lot with IG stories. That's a fun one to play around with. That one is raw and as candid as it gets. Like that is just you being in the moment pull people in those directions of where they can find you. And then once they start to, to see you and interact with you and know that you're taking that extra step, you aren't just throwing a post up there that they're like, oh, that's cool. 
they want to come back to you. The key with interaction is that it's inter, like it's you and them interacting. It's personal. You just took that idea of, yeah, she's cool. And you became in a, 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 almost like, um, almost if you look at it as like a marriage, like if you look at interaction as that stage where you're actually talking, you're actually like speaking right to someone where they're not just attracted to you, but they're like, I inter I can interact with her. Like, if, if I had a social media bestie, like this would be that person. And interaction is that opportunity where you're engaging them, you're making them think on a deeper level, you're making it so that they come back to you because you have offered them value. You have started to get them thinking about themselves in a way because they see some type of light in you. And so that is really stage two, is that you are interacting. You are finding more ways to find the people but connect with them. So interaction is where you take that attraction more and they're like, oh yeah, she's cool. I like her. I dig her. Where they're actually like closer to you. They feel a little more connected to you. So that's stage two. Um, and they search you out too. They're like, Gotta do, I don't know who this Steph girl is. I'm going to go see if she has a website or maybe she's on Instagram or something. They're actually trying to get more of, of what you are and who you stand and what you stand for almost. Okay. Um, what page was I on? Interaction. I'm going on page six. Okay. Interest. So now that you have attracted them, they're starting to interact with you. You go to the next phase and that next phase is where you offer something. That is when you actually have something to add value to their life where they say, I need to be a part of that. So for me, it's free groups that I run on Facebook, but you can offer more than just that. You can offer that, you can offer something else, but this is where that standout quality really comes into play. And this is where you can say to yourself, this is fun. This isn't a stressor. This isn't something that I need to, to worry about. This isn't SC related. This is where you can come out of your shell and really define yourself as a, a different type of coach. And that is, for example, um, what can you offer them? So first, offer, offer that value, but in return, you need something. You need something from them. So I'm going to offer you value. I'm, I'm going to let you get a little closer to me. But I need something from you, and that's either an email, which I think is critical. I think that's a really good idea because we don't know what social media is going to do, right? And so when you have people on IG or whatever, that email, you have that email. That's big. Um, it might be that you need to come over to this group with me. Come and hang out with me over here. Um, I need, um, I said email twice, a referral. I need you to give me a referral of a few friends that might be interested, a share or something. So I'm going to offer you value. I'm going to offer you something. I'll talk about what that is in a second. But in return, I need something from you. My go-to is putting them into a group and getting an email. So when I get something in return, I'm looking for those two things. Notice, I am not talking about products. I am, I am not talking about Beachbody. I am not talking about Beachbody on demand. I am talking about something I individually, as Katie Ersta, can offer someone. Okay, so what's in it for them? They want to know, okay, girlfriend, I will give you my email, but what do I get from it? And that's where you set up that clear expectation. If you're setting up a free group, you are telling them up front what you are going to get in the free group. Yes, I understand it's free. I get it. And if we were thinking um, on a basic level, if we weren't really, really thinking like CEOs, this would be different. But we're CEOs and we're thinking a little bit more high level. Um, when I think of free group, I think this is my funnel. This is my business. This is where people get to see me, the real deal me. me. So I'm going to invest time in this. I invest, and I'll be honest with you, I invest a lot of time in my free groups, in my relationships with those people, in developing them, in encouraging them, in inviting them, in sharing with them, and I love it. 
it's not work to me. It's actually getting to know people and, and really like loving what I do. I, I get to talk to people about their goals. I get to hear their stories and I hear those objections up front. But what's cool is there's not that barrier where it's like, all right, I know you're trying to sell me something. It's not in there when you're offering value up front. And so I do set up that clear expectation from the beginning of, okay, you're going to go to this free group. This is what I'm going to get do for you. This is what's going to happen. There's going to be a giveaway. Awesome. People love free swag. You give them a hat. They're like, woohoo, I'm the happiest clam in the world. Um, you, you give a, do a giveaway or, you know, I say, all right, we're working our butts. We're going to work our butts and you're not going to be able to walk for a week. And that's my goal. That's my goal in life is to not allow you to walk for an entire week. I set that clear expectation and every day you're going to come, you're going to sweat. I'm going to give you free recipes. I'm going to give you daily motivation. I am going to encourage you. I am going to, you know, uplift you. I am going to give you a meal plan that you're going to get. I make it very clear, but in return, I need your email. Or in return, you need to refer five people. Or in return, you need to share this post. Whatever it is, you've set the clear expectation. This is the return. And the whole time you're in that free group, and again, I do trainings on this, and they're on my YouTube, um, you have to offer them value. You're just offering value. And that's where it gets really, really fun, is where you really are like doing your job. You're in there doing your jam. And they're saying, yep, she's the real deal. She is everything she said she was on her Facebook page. But now I get to know her on a deeper level. And that's pretty cool. So it's almost like your funnel is like your dating system. I never really thought of it this way. So you do this. I provide this. And it benefits you because you need to be part of my free group because you need to be part of... Um, or my email list because whatever it is, it is. And this is the cool part is this is fun. This, this is something where it's not stressful. You get to be creative and you get to think outside the box and you get to say, what can I offer people? What's going to be my thing? What do I want to be known for? What can I give to people? And that might be your free workouts. Um, it might be a free meal plan. It might be that you create a free ebook. Why, why not? You know, maybe you create a free ebook for people that is all about um, your, your five day running kickstart. Or, um, and I keep going back to running because I think of my coach, Rachel. I think she's on the call that she's like this crazy runner. And, and uh, I just think about like if, she, if, if you offered like a, a free ebook that started those people who are watching you who are like, I don't know how to start running. That would be a cool ebook that only you can offer. It has your signature on it, or and it doesn't have to be fitness. You know, if you're somebody that likes fashion, I just learned what OOTD meant like two days ago. I didn't know what an OOTD was. Uh, you know, maybe you create a free ebook that helps the fashion impaired figure out how to wear clothing. Um, whatever it might be. Maybe you want to do something where you, you set up a 30 minute free consultation, uh, for people who have no idea what clean eating is, um, clean eating for dummies, like just have so much fun with it. Just think to yourself like, okay, when I started this whole beach body thing, what did I have no clue about? Not the coaching part, but the fitness part. What did I not understand? What did I not get? Or what is something that I wish I had that I never had that would have been really cool to have that I can create now. And that is something that's going to appeal to so many people that you can offer to people. So again, the interest part is that third stage of the funnel where you went from, all right, we've attracted you. You're in my wheel. Um, you're, you're engaged uh, in what I'm saying. And then you're interested in what I'm offering. So your third stage is you're interested in what I'm offering. You get what I'm throwing down, but I need something in return. And that's clear. It's clear. I need your email. I need you in this group. Um, you know, I, I need referrals. I need whatever it is. This is where it's, there's a transaction. There has to be a transaction of sorts. Okay. All right. Is everybody following me? Cause I know I'm kind of, can you guys give me some either love or like something? So I know we're all good. Um, these are just some samples of things that I did that show sort of how I engaged. This was for a free meal, I said. So um, the one that says I am that girl, I gave them a little bit of a, a scoop about me, who I am in a nutshell. But I said, oh, I might have a giveaway up my sleeve. And people are like, oh, heck, yes, I love a giveaway. Enter me like five times. I want to win. 
um, one sample of Energize or whatever it is. It can be really little. Uh, this is another one where I said, um, read the details so that I can add you no email needed, no sign up, but they had to get in a free group. And I think that was really effective because they didn't want to give me an email and they didn't want to sign up for anything, but I put them into a group. And guess what I did? I got their email in the group because they signed up for a free ebook. I gave them my meal plan. So I ended up getting their email anyway, okay? Um, this one was just getting a poll. People love to give you their, their thoughts, their ideas. I do a poll in every event that I run um, about their workout. So they know, okay, I need help. What, what kind of free group do you wanna do? What's this gonna be? Um, and then they, or this one was about uh, why they're coming into the group. So I got to know them a little bit. I was engaged with them a little bit. All right, so those were just some samples. And in uh, engagement, I'm going to the next page. Okay, now I have them in the funnel, okay? I have them specifically in a group or an email list. Some people do a drip campaign. Uh, I haven't really done anything like that yet. I am going to be doing something soon. I'm kind of trying something out. But wherever you have your people, this is where you engage on like the second level. And this is where you are doing exactly what you did before, but people understand that now you really do have something to offer them. And so again, I do more with the jabs, the jabs, the jabs, the hooks, but I'm the real deal. I am exactly who I am on my Facebook page, but on a very personal level. So I really talk up the fact that you know, you guys are so awesome. You're so lucky to be in here. This is just, you know, like this is a lot of fun. What are some things that you can get here? Um, yeah, they do. My emails go to my free fighter workout, which is the one that I have on my, uh, my blog, from my blog. So that's the one that I do. But you can set it up for whatever you want. So Steph, if you offer an ebook, you can um, have that go to you know, sign up for my free ebook and have like a separate link for it or maybe just um, a document, like a Wufu app or something, and you've collected their emails then and you put them into an email list as well. So you, they're not customers, they're just my free group and eventually they do become my customers though, many times though. Good question. Um, so stick to your words. So if you said they're giving, you're giving them a free workout every day, you're giving them a free workout every day. If you're giving them a recipe or a meal plan every evening, you're giving them that every evening. Um, if you say that you're doing a giveaway, you are giving them, you know, a giveaway. You're doing a giveaway. If you talk about the fact that you're going live, um, if you have a guest speaker, whatever it might be, you want to make sure that you're staying true to whatever it is that you have to offer. But you want to make sure that within there, you can actually start talking about what you have that is appealing. And that's where the coaching part is. So once I really focus on, um, in my free groups, people who are doing the workouts, I then start to have personal conversations with them. I start to talk to them about their life. I start to talk to them about their experiences with working out. And, and a lot of times they do tell me, you know, I've, I've met other beach body coaches and I've just never felt comfortable with a coach or I was in a challenge group once before and my coach left me high and dry or, and there's this feeling of, I really want to defend the integrity of what Beachbody has to offer because if you do it right, it's done beautifully. If you coach someone and truly change their life, there are no words that can, that can go against what you believe. Like you, you've seen it in action, but we have to make sure that we're, we're getting down to the relationship part of it. And so the other thing that I do in there is, um, I, I talk about objections and I address them. I talk about how, yeah, hey guys, I am one of those beach body coaches, but I want to tell you about my experience first. Um, and I'll talk about my objection with that bag of powder. I call it the bag of powder. Or uh, I talk about just how I meal plan and why Shakeology is the meal that I use. Or then I'll screen share in there the benefits of beach body on demand. Your Sean T week is a great time that you can actually do this. And I share me. After this, I'm going on live in my page, and I'm going to just talk about how I started coaching and how I got to this point. Um, I'm going to do that in my Sean T group. So I'm just not one of those coaches who threw them in a group. Like, they get to know me. That engagement in that group is so key. And why we spend so much time on that, because even if somebody isn't coming to you this month, 
even if they need to see it next month or the next month or the next month and you show up consistently, those people are going to, they're going to come back to you. And it might not be in a week. It might not be in a month, but this a year into doing this, this is how I actually get all the points that I get is through this value funnel. Um, and then the last thing is just the most important part is asking and you shall receive, not from everybody, but from a lot of people. Uh, be honest with people and ask for the sale. Tell people what you're offering. Tell people that on the 19th, you have a challenge group starting. What's in the challenge group? What are they going to get? What are you as their coach going to offer them? Um, why is it different? You know, I upsell the, I don't know if that's the right word, but I sell up the uh, tracker app. I don't use these for free groups. I talk about how I'm giving them a downloadable app that they can use to track their progress. Um, and that they will get reminders, alerts for whenever they're not checking in, whenever they're not doing the work. And it gives me access to either text or email them, depending on how they have it set up. When I see that they're not, you know, doing what they said they wanted to do. So there's that accountability that they aren't going to, to get in, in a gym. The other thing that I do that I started doing a couple months ago and I didn't realize the power of it is this positive peer pressure. Whenever somebody signs up to become one of my challengers, I shout them out in my groups, in my free group. I shout them out and I say, you guys, I'm so excited. Lisa is ready and she is on board. She is committed to achieving her fitness goals. And I give a little blurb about that person based on the conversation which we've maybe had personally um, about their fitness journey. And, and maybe I'll talk about it in there like, you know, Lisa told me about how, you know, she did Weight Watchers for a long time and she really wants to make sure that she's getting healthy for her kids. So it's, it's doing something where it's like they're doing it. They're trusting Katie. Maybe I should trust Katie too. Um, and then the other thing is I make sure that I'm being personal with them outside the group. So yeah, they, they're getting me inside the group, but if they're really standing out to me as somebody who is potentially going to be an amazing challenger, even amazing coach. I make sure that I personalize that even outside the group. Maybe I'll do a little shout out on their, their Facebook page and I'll say, I just wanted to tell you you're doing a great job in the group. I'm so glad you're here. Um, or I'll send them a personal message. Anything that says to them, like, I, I like what she's throwing down. But again, I go back to saying, I do ask for the sale. And I don't tend to get a lot of objections because in the stages prior to that, I have already addressed them. So my last step, my action step is really about building the trust with people and making them see that this is, that I am the real deal and that this is what I have to offer and this is how you can work with me. So I think that's the last thing that I had. I might have one more slide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The last thing is just a couple of things that you might want to consider. So this works, um, hands down a hundred percent. It does, it does work when you work. Um, this is work though. And so if you're looking at it from the perspective of, I'm just going to hit SC five every month and I'm just going to run one challenge group every month. And I am occasionally going to sign a coach. You're, you're, this isn't, this isn't going to work for you because this is work. Creating your own content in regard to, you know, whatever it is that you're offering meal plans or free workouts or ebooks or whatever it is that takes work. And I want you to understand that as the CEO of your business, it's work that's a lot of fun. Um, it's work that you can say, if there's something to be said about being kind of proud of what you can put your, put your, put your name on and say, I made this. Like I have this to offer people that nobody else does, um, which is pretty amazing to you. Uh, people move throughout the funnel. Um, oh, I forgot to say that too. Tracking is a must. I use Google Streak. I do have one video, I think, on it. Um, my, my husband actually walks people through how to use Google Streak. I use it. I love Google Streak. Um, it just helps me really uh, focus on making sure that I'm moving people through the street pipelines. There are tons of trainings. Brooke Lipoff from another organization does an amazing series on Google Streets. She would be worth looking up as well. Um, the other thing to add though is people move through the funnel and they can move in the opposite direction too. So like I said, remember in that attraction stage when people are getting a feel for if I'm the real deal or if I'm not, sometimes people get into engagement and then 
maybe you say something that you stand for that you believe in and people are like, whoa, not my jam. And then they, they're out or you get them all the way down. to so when it t comes time to take action and they're like, oh, I'm not buying anything. I don't, I don't want to do it. They might go all the way back up to the top, but again, they can trickle through that funnel. And that's the beauty of the funnel is when you just look at it in a black and white sense, like it's just about relationships and relationships sometimes don't work out and that's okay. Or relationships need more time to be built and that's okay as well too. Uh, I keep the one in 10 rule, um, about one in 10 people who work their way through the funnel at any given time um, do purchase from me. But again, because if you're really doing a great job of this and you are getting these people in at a, at a larger number, then it becomes it becomes easier to convert them. And I will say that number increases as I run more free groups. The people who are in there for a while tend to come back. Um, they don't always invest the first month or the second month. And, and some of them, it's, it, it does take them a good year before they're ready to. But because I'm consistently showing up and not going anywhere, it's like I'm proving myself over and over. Um, emails are key. I collect emails. Um, just having them on that list. I got a lot of people who were on my email list into the Sean T group. That's how I got a lot of people. Consistency is key. I spelled that word. Yep, sure did. Sure did. Um, offer, and sure did. I must have gotten tired here. Offer enough to, in, oh my God. Offer enough to an edge with out too much. I can't even read that. Offer enough to engage without too much. I know what I'm trying to say here. Steph, I see you laughing at me. Um, you want to offer people enough value, but not so much value that they don't want to invest in you. Like I've seen people do it the other way where they just keep giving things away and then they're like, well, I don't have to invest in you because you've given me everything for free. Um, so I really want to caution you with that. I give them enough that they get to that point where they know that Beachbody on Demand is going to be the real deal. And they know that my challenge group is going to be the real deal. And yeah, seven days is great. It's awesome to get this sneak peek. But what are you going to do after these seven days? Are you looking to make a permanent change or are you just looking to have fun for seven days. So I offer them just enough to give them a little glimpse into the way that I coach, the, way, the, the opportunity without giving them so much that they don't feel the need to. Um, and then lastly, this is just something that I want you to know. And, and with coaches, how many coaches there are in the organization, you do bring value. And the value funnel is all a way of for you to start feeling more confident about what you do have to offer and how you stand out. And all of a sudden, I think when I started doing this, I stopped looking around at everybody else. That was one of the coolest parts of doing this is because I was so focused on offering value to other people that I didn't have time to worry about what other people were doing. And it reminded me that I had something unique to offer people, that I was individually offering something that other people weren't. So when it came down to it, if it was between me and another coach, the chances were higher that they were going to come to me because I wasn't just slapping a picture of a celebrity um, you know, trainer on my page and saying purchase from me. So I just want to make sure you guys know that too, that the value funnel, funnel is a way for you to build your confidence and you do matter, you know, and you do have something to offer. And this is a great chance for you to get creative about what you have to offer as well. So that is it in a nutshell. I know that that was probably a lot of information. Do you guys have questions for me about the value funnel? Nothing. Jen, Megan, where is Jen? I, don't even see I know it. Jen was on her phone. Um, I thought it was great. I love the idea of an ebook. I feel like that's like something I've like starred three times on what to put together that I can offer. I have a five day ab group that I've done and I have my own video. So I'm like thinking, how can I turn that? into something to give. So great things. I did want to share one thing, just something I did differently with free groups this time that I've never done that actually worked really well for me. So obviously we had Shanti week this week, um, free group that you could offer. I actually ran my challenge group start date the same day. So I was recruiting essentially for Sean week and my challenge group week. So I did it in kind of like two different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I offered an early enrollment into my challenge group. And then I posted about that 
for the most part of two weeks. And then I took like three days and talked about Shanti week. And I really, like I, that, those are the two things I primarily talked about for two straight weeks. But what it did is I got a whole bunch of people who were interested. Um, I did the whole hearts post. If you've seen that flying around, we're like, you know, comment below what you would like to lose in terms of weight. I forget how it's worded, but I did that early like, at the very beginning of June. And I had a group of like 40 people. I had, I don't know seven commit to it and then everyone who didn't commit to my challenge group i'm like well that's cool no big deal i'm actually starting a free group as well and it's starting at the same time so people who were already interested and excited they just went into the shanti group so like i didn't end up from like the cold calls or like the hey who wants to join shanti week those people who said interested i didn't have a high level of commitment rate and i got a lot of emails so my email list grew yeah. wonderfully over that but I didn't have a lot of commitment. I got the commitment from the people who I chatted with for a week about their goals, who decided for X, Y, and Z reasons they couldn't commit, who are now in the Shanti week, and they're the ones who are really participating and sharing. So I know I've always done it the other way, where I run a free group, and then my goal was then to get those free group people into a challenge group, where this time I did it just at the same time, and it gave me a way to, instead of saying, I'll reach back out with you next month, yeah. It gave me an opportunity to say, well, you know, this is free if you want to join in this. And since those people were already thinking about spending $160, putting their credit card in for a free trial was no big deal. Right. So yeah, it worked off better because of the Sean T week. Both were fitness related. Both had similar, you know, you could kind of plug their goals into both groups. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. It just worked. I never did both groups starting at the same time, but it worked really well. The other thing that I did that gives me more time to advertise for a challenge group is my preseason, I started doing as a packet um, and giving it to them and whenever they sign up. So I say to them, like, that's part of like what I offer to them is they get a packet, like a beginner's packet. And it basically is all the stuff you would put in your preseason, um, but it includes like my sample meal plans. It includes like a couple of the blog posts that I did about like how to clean your pantry out, you know, kitchen essentials and those kind of things. So I took all those posts and just made it into a packet. And so that first week where I preseason, I'm just doing very small, like motivational things where you could jump in at any time. So that's what I do. I'll do that the week of the 19th. And then the other thing, Megan, and if anyone else has done this, this is just a thought. If you do those snippet workouts um, that you were talking about, like on your like page, or you do them as like tutorials, let that be your ebook. Like have your YouTube links in there and you, you already have it basically done on, or you have a, a drip email campaign. And so, you know, day, maybe you're doing an arm challenge. You, you take like five of the arm workouts that you have done. Day one, you have an arm workout. Day two, you have an arm workout. Day three, you have an arm workout. But then you also maybe do like um, testimonials from some of your challengers about the results that you've helped them get. Um, day four, you know, ab workout, how to deal with muscle soreness. Um, and then day five is, you know, your fifth workout. And then how are you feeling your results? And then you do another email where you actually talk to them about you. You know, you give a little bit about your personality. You, you share a little bit about your story. And so in there, you also say like, this is what I do. I work with challengers. I help people get results. And so your drip campaign has gone from, you know, five days of, of workouts for five days. It just slowly each day gives out the email. And then your last day is your invitation. So people are kind of connecting with you throughout there. And you already have a lot of the work done because you already have the videos. So if you say to yourself, if you're thinking right now, if you're a blogger or if you, um, you know, maybe you're a writer or maybe you do videos or whatever it might be that you do. How can you use that for free content without recreating it? Um, so I think that's also kind of imperative. And then Canva lets you do everything. Canva lets you create um, eBooks. It lets you create um, everything. Like letterheads, whatever you want to do, you can do it beautifully on Canva. So it actually looks very professional. It looks really nice as well. And I've used that too. So just, I think that's the key is this is a very much like, you just have to kind of laser focus straight ahead. 
and say, well, what do I have to offer? What's my natural talent? You know, what, do, what am I already like pretty, what comes kind of naturally to me that doesn't for other people um, that I, I know a lot about that I can share. And, and even if it isn't fitness related, if it's your people related, you can connect fitness in there in some way. So yeah, I think a lot of people like beach body coaches, they just, they automatically think it has to be health and fitness all the time. And it, it doesn't. And in fact, I think it works against us sometimes if that's all it is um, that we offer. Cause remember most of us are coaches. We're not certified trainers. We're not nutritionists. Um, a lot of us are, you know, moms or we're just, you know, people that are on our own fitness journey. Um, and we have to kind of make sure that's part of our story as well and being authentic to that too. So yeah. Cool. Do you guys have any other questions? Cause I do know that this was probably a lot of information. No, awesome. but thank you. I have a lot of notes and to do's and things to think about. And thank you. Very cool. All right, guys. So next week, Jen is going to be talking to us about, she's going to take that idea that I talked about attraction. And now looking back, we probably should have switched weeks, but she's going to talk about the attraction piece of it. And she's going to talk about posting with purpose. And she's going to bring that on the call. And then the next week we are actually going to do a power hour. Um, as well, we're going to kind of put a little spin on it and, and finalize our month um, as we get ready for July, which we have Summit coming up too. So that's all I got for you guys tonight. I'll have this recording up if you guys want to share it with your teams as well. And if you think of any other questions between now and then, just let me know and I'll be sure to reach out, okay? Cool. All right, guys. Have a great night.